When you're out photographing wildlife, sometimes you don't get the beautiful soft light of the morning or late afternoon. Some cases you just get stuck with glaring contrast because that's the time when the wildlife's out. I think it's better to make the photographs in poor light and then deal with the high contrast later in Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna show you in Lightroom Classic some tricks to deal with too much contrast in your wildlife images. Coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and today I'm gonna to show you how to deal with extreme contrast in your wildlife images inside a Lightroom Classic. Now, if you want to download and work on the same original files I'm going to be working on, I'll leave a link in the description and you can do just that. So let's get into Lightroom Classic and see what we can do with too much contrast in our images. All right, we're inside Lightroom Classic. And what we've got here is let's go into the metadata of this image just to give you an idea of what we're working with. You can see here that this was shot at you know, 11.45 in the morning, which is almost, you know, noon. That's like the worst light of the day, 12 noon, right? It was shot at, uh, with a Nikon Z9, 600 millimeter, and with the teleconverter engaged. So that's a 840 millimeters. And so we shot that fairly close at a, a pretty fairly low ISO, right? That's one of the nice things about shooting in the middle of the day is your ISOs don't have to be quite so high because you got plenty of light, right? So, 640 is not bad so we can kind of crop this a little bit and comfortably because we know the iso is not so not so high and it's not going to be create a bunch of noise let's go ahead and just crop this here we'll you know kind of use our our tools inside a lightroom in terms of how we're balancing this right in in terms of a crop i usually like to work with the the rule of thirds and keep the subject matter in that area and leave a little bit of extra area out to the side. You'll see today why we're doing that too, because we're gonna create a little bit more of an environment here for this bird. All right, so there we've got our original. And what I'm gonna do here real quick like is we're just gonna make a virtual copy because when we make a virtual copy, that gives us uh, two that we can work on and, and I can show you the difference of how we started versus what we end up with. All right, so we're inside here. Let's go into develop module. Now, a lot of people, when they get in a situation like this, they'll say, oh, I need to lift the shadows. So I'm just gonna take the shadows and slide that over. And it did lift the shadows, obviously, but it didn't, it, it, it didn't do much, right? It lifted a little bit, but it really didn't do much. And so whenever you, when you're, this little side tip, whenever you're inside a Lightroom and you want to get back to square, just double click on the word and that'll make it nice and even. So on our exposure, if we start bringing up the exposure, we could start getting a little bit of lift, but you can see all this glare isn't gonna work. So let's go in and work with a mask because that's probably the easiest way that we can actually do work on this image and not, uh, have to do it globally. We're gonna work on just the bird to begin with. So let's go in here, we go over to our masks, click mask, come down, and let's start with a brush mask. So we'll start with a brush mask, and over here, we're gonna bring this up to 100% so we can see what we're doing. We grab our brush, and right over here is a strip of shadow that we wanna remove, so let's go ahead and slide that over. And there's a little bit of a shadow there. And there's one over here as well. I think that's pretty good for right now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into our tone and let's take a look what happens when we bring up the exposure there. Now we're just bringing up the exposure of just the face of the bird, right? We're not bringing up the exposure globally. So we can also bring those shadows up a little bit just to give it a little bit more evenness. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now what we wanna do is we wanna deal with um, a couple of other things with this bird. So let's, when you're in a high contrast area, you get a lot of nice sharp colors. The problem with the colors is sometimes it's, um, you know, they're mixed in with highlights that kind of then deaden the colors a little bit. So what I like to do is do another mask. And this time, obviously now here's our masks over here. See them right here. So whenever you wanna do a mask, once you've done one, don't go over here. People do this all the time. I do it all the time. 
uh, come over here and click plus, and that gives us a new mask. And we're gonna do a color range mask. So a color range mask basically tells Lightroom, hey, we just wanna deal with a mask based on colors. So let's go ahead and click in this orange area. And you can see what it did. It grabbed a mask over all of this orange area here. And if we go shift to add, we can add another color, but you got it's you got to be it's a little bit of a risk because you can do so much, right? It, you don't know what colors it's seeing throughout the whole thing. You can see that in that little when we try to add that color, it grabbed all that other stuff. So let's not deal with that. We'll do just Command Z and come back to just what we had here. And here we're going to come in and we'll do a little bit of saturation of those reds. There we go. Let's bring that up just a little bit. That looks good. Now what we're going to do is do yet another mask, and we're going to, this time we're going to do a mask of this area of the bird. Now we could brush this in, or we can just do a simple uh, subject mask. So let's go ahead in here, and we'll say select subject, and you'll see what happens here. Let's move back out just a little bit. It did a pretty good job, but it grabbed the foot, it grabbed uh, part of this branch, of course, part of this branch. So let's go in and just remove that, and that's fairly simple. That little triple double line, that little kind of sergeant looking file uh, icon up there will allow you to kind of expand your mask a little bit, give you a little bit more details, a little easier. Here. So we can do a subtract and we'll subtract with the brush and we'll just come in here and just paint over the areas that we don't want part of this. I always like to make a little tiny little brush go around the areas that I want to have done and then make the brush bigger. There we go. Got a little bit of overspill here. And this is kind of cool here. You can come up here to navigator and just move that box around and that gets you wherever you want. So we can just keep going with our negative brush, brushing out this here. Okay, so that's a pretty good version of our just the bird being worked on. Let's see, let's remove just a little bit more, a little fringing going on over here. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now what I want to do with this mask before I do anything else is I want to duplicate this mask because we're going to use it later. So let's go ahead and just duplicate the mask and we'll name this full bird. That way, if we want to come back to this, we can. So for right now, we're not going to worry about it. Let's go back into our other mask that we were working on. We like this. And we want to take this a little bit farther because remember, we just want to work on the lower part of the body. So we're going to take and do a subtract with our brush. And let's continue brushing to subtract anything that we don't want to have shown here. Make sure that your auto mask is off when you're doing this kind of brushing so it doesn't grab a tone and, and work with that. There we go. So now we're just working with this lower part of the bird and that's this mask here. So we can actually name this uh, lower body. Now I don't always name all of my masks, but in, in demonstration purposes, it's really good. And then if you're doing a lot of masks and you're trying to go through and, and handle different things, it's good to name them because then you don't have to go look for them. It's pretty easy. So this is just the lower body. So what we want to do here is we're just going to add a little bit of color to this. So let's go down here to this into our color. This toggles down if it's not toggled down already. And we have our color that we can work with the temperature. I don't like to fool with that. Sometimes it's easier just to use a a base color. So we click on that little box and we come over here and we find a color that we want. So let's just for kicks, we'll click right here and go into uh, kind of a yellow amber. And you see, we've added some warmth down to this part of the bird. Now it's a little extreme. So let's go ahead and X that out. So we can always bring the saturation back on that color, but that looks pretty decent. So let's pull back and see what we've done so far. There, now we've created a mask for just the bird. Let's show you the before and after. 
And now this is starting to look pretty good. It's starting to come together the way we want it. And while we like this, this is, this is cool. We want to bring this up a couple of notches and we're going to really improve this even more with more masking. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. Now, if you feel like you're learning useful tips and tricks here and want to support this channel, go to my website, www.imagelight.com and click on digital products. You might find something there, a little help, such as uh, my wildlife brushes, which I'll, I'll show you in just a second, or say my popular ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography, that talks about how to create sharper images. You might help improve your images and you'd be supporting the channel. I always read and respond to all the comments in the comment section. So feel free to leave a comment, suggestion, and I'll get back to you. Sometimes your comments lead to future videos. So I appreciate the ideas, so keep them coming. And always, if you like, you can contact me directly via email. My address is terry at imagelight.com. I'll answer your questions and add you to my mailing list so you can be alerted to my next video released that way. Now, let's finish our work and bring this, this up to a, a whole new level. All right, we're back into Lightroom. And what we're gonna do is create a new mask, right? So before we create a new mask, I think this is an easy way to go. We go back to that full bird mask that we did and we're just gonna come over here to the three dots and right click. And we come down over here and we can say, let's invert the full bird. In fact, you know what? Let's duplicate and invert in case we need to go back to it. It doesn't hurt. So now we've got this whole mask of everything but the bird. Let's move this over here this time so we have a little more space to work with. So now let's bring the exposure down on this. Okay, now we're going to bring the exposure down in the background. So the background is not quite so vibrant. We want the bird to stand out, obviously. So we're going to bring that down a little bit. Another way to bring things less attention to them is to make them just a little bit cooler, right? So let's go ahead and bring our temperature down just a little bit cooler. And obviously another way is to bring our saturation down. So we can bring our saturation down in this area of all this area here. So it's not, not as, as bright as it was. And then the other thing that we want to do sometimes is to bring some of the detail out, right? If you take the detail out, then you're not going to have you know, the eye wants to go to something sharp. And if you pull sharpness away, then it ends up being a little softer and the eye doesn't want to linger on there. So we don't want it to linger a long time on the background. We want it to see the background so we can see the environment, but we don't want the eye to linger there. So let's take our texture and slide it backwards a little bit. And that actually works as like a softening tool. So we'll soften all of this background. So now you can see what we've done here. We've got this bird standing out and we'll, we'll just show you the on and off here. That's where it's competing, and now it's not competing at all. But we do want to try to make this look a little more attractive. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create another mask. So let's go on in here, and we can hit this, or we can just hit the letter K, because we know K is gonna bring us a brush mask. So there we go, we have our brush. And let's do this, let's take and make this a small brush up here. Now this is kind of a fun technique if you wanna make like a light beam. So you can click here and that starts the mask. And then when you come over here, you wanna make it a much bigger brush, right? So this will be, but you have to hold the shift key down before you do anything else, hold that shift key down and it'll make a straight enlarged light that comes from that side. So let's do it again. We'll make a little bit of a smaller brush right up here click, come down here with a bigger brush, hold the shift key down, click. And now you can see we've got this straight beam of light here, right? Now we like this except for, and you can fill in as, as much or whatever you want to do. we like this except uh, we need to subtract. We need to subtract the bird or the subject, right? So let's go over to our masks again. We'll go to this mask, we'll click on those three little dots, and we're gonna say, uh, actually don't click on the three little dots, click on the whole thing, and we go to subtract. And then we come down here and we wanna subtract subject. 
So it takes a subject out on this. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and do a little bit with this. Let's go into our tones again. And we can actually bring the exposure up just a little bit, creating almost a beam of light that comes through the trees. And we can actually probably warm that light up a little bit. We can either just take our temp and warm it up just a little bit. That's probably the easiest because we're not going to do an extreme color change on that. Just a little bit of warmth. And you can see what we've created here. We've created this nice little beam of light that comes through here. Now, depending on how extreme you want to make it. So if we wanted to make it real extreme or whatever it is we want to do, that's entirely up to you. But as you're working on this, you might say, well, you know what? I don't want that beam of light to be affecting the branches that are in between. So in a simple way, you just come over here and you go subtract and you go to brush and then you brush away anything out of that mass that you don't want to be affected by that additional light. So you can come through here and take out branches that maybe you don't want to have lit up. You just want the light look like it's filtering through the trees. So you can come through and do, do that as you go. So now look what we've done. We brought this bird front and center. We've created a much a, a simple way to work on this. This is just masking as you go. Now, yes, there's a ton of masks. Of course there is, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We keep adding the mask to it. Now, the last thing we want to do is just tune up the bird itself. So let's come in here. We'll go up to 100%. Actually, let's go up to 200%. And we can move it around here if we like. Now, what I want to do is fix the eye. You guys have probably seen me do this before. But this is a simple brush mask. And instead of coming up here and hitting brush and doing all this or adding a brush, we just hit the letter K. That gives us a brush mask. And in our brushes, we're going to come over here. And I have preset brushes that, that I sell online. Those are my brushes that I sell. And here's, they're all for wildlife. So this is like, this is a, a, a version that I have here that I, I always work with highlights for. If you're, if you're working on eyes, it's a way to work on the, the bird's irises and highlights. So let's click on this. And we're just going to lighten this area under here. And I do it in stages. So I hit K again. And instead of using number one, I'm going to use number two, TV002. And that's a little bit of a lighter brush. Yep, it's going to lighten it just a little bit. Then we'll hit K again, and we'll do another brush. Make it brush number three. See how that's starting to light things up? And it's gradual because you're using different brushes. If you ever go too extreme, you can always go back here and lower the opacity on any one of these brushes. And let's do one more. We'll hit K and we'll just kind of enhance that highlight that's in the eye. So we got that nice highlight from the noonday sun, but we want to try to make that just a little bit bigger. So we grab, I usually center it right over where the highlight is and press. And now we've got that big highlight. It's probably a little too much. So we're just going to pull it back here on the amount. And I always encourage you, even though it looks like a lot here, Take a look to see what it looks like on the actual image. And you'll see it's not too extreme there. You can pull it back just a little bit. But you can see that you, you've you ended up adding a nice highlight that's not too extreme because it's very tiny when you have this all set up like that. So you can see over here we've got all of these, all of these different masks that we put together to assemble this image. And let's go in here and you can see what our original look like and then what we've done to it. So again, you're stuck with high contrast, but don't let that stop you from taking the pictures that you wanna take that day. Take them and then see if you can come into Lightroom and manipulate a little bit to make it into a really nice image. And I think that a lot of times you can because we obviously took an image here that was you know, very difficult lighting situation, shadows across the face and whatnot, but we were able to create something nice. See you next time.